Welcome back to the Ghostki. I am Gray, and today we have yet another Finnish First Division match for you. Today we are away at Ilves. They are currently in the relegation zone. So, in with us with a current, you know, three point lead at the top of the three point six point lead at the top of the table, I believe. Unless FC Hockey has played a match, which means they'll have a match in hand. I haven't quite checked that. But anyhow, we should win this one. One would think fairly easily. However, that has not really been the case this season. And hopefully, like I said, from an entertainment standpoint, for you and all yours and your entertainment and all that good shit, it stays that way. So, yeah, we have six points at the top. That's the way it is. Anyhow. All right. So how do we want to do this? How do we want to approach this match? Let's be a little assertive. And put a little pressure on him. Because I think that's kind of something that needs to be done right now. In my, in my honest opinion. Um, and that's something that I think I kind of have a good handle on. You know, that's... I think I've said that before. I mean, you get me in a final. Ooh, I'll say that. Oh, no. I mean, we had an early lead last time, and that necessarily didn't necessarily work out because, you know, ha, our defenders fucking blew it. But anyhow, I mean, it, it is. I, I do have to say, with my Viking career as well, um, I, this formation really does defend pretty well. I mean, it has, it has its shaky times, but, you know, I think that. Mostly due to the league that they're in and the, um, the, uh, uh, what do you want to call it? Like the talent, the talent difference between us and everyone else since we just earned promotion back up to the Norwegian division, um, on that file. You know, we, we, we kind of had some shaky moments, but in general, in my honest opinion, that formation has, this formation rather, has proven to be pretty good. Um, and then just like I said, it all depends on how you defend. I mean, obviously, if you defend well, and we have three central defenders, which that position hat does have. And I do have to say, when we um, when we did have some defensive issues and, and just general performance issues, it was because we didn't have our normal three defenders back there. You know, the three guys that make it really solid, give us a nice base, you know, to defend and, and move everything, you know, forward from. That also is kind of what we need here. Um, you know, like I said, our defense isn't all that good if you look at our guys and i haven't really showed you much but if you look at you know heights and rice and then hangel and all them you know what we don't really have that great defenders every one of them has a pretty big weakness in some areas like you know first of all hogblum is not a central defender by trade he's a defensive midfielder he's in there filling the role so he's not entirely comfortable oh well off sides but well took on the volley jesus but anyhow, um, you know, so there, there's, there's his giant weakness. Ryson isn't really all that good in the air, nor does he have a lot of pace. So there's his weaknesses. And Hankula just isn't really all that great at defending in general, for whatever fucking reason. He's a central defender, but yeah. Anyhow, he's just not very good quality. So, Jesus, I thought they had a goal there. So therefore, you know, like I said, there's, that's really the big issue, I think, with our three. I mean, like I said, you look at Hinkula and the little spider graph that he's got, you know, it, yeah, he's just, he's, you know, not a great tackler, just not very, you know, good, doesn't have a whole lot of great mental attributes and shit like that, so he makes a lot of mistakes, you know, whereas Hagblum, like I said, is really our best defender, but he's not a natural central defender, and that really causes a lot of problems for us, too. It really, it really hurts us. Yeah, going forward, you know, like I said, you need a stable three center backs, you know, you need a good stable defense. The defensive platform that you can trust and and stuff like that. And quite honestly, you know, I, I know I've said this many a times, I don't trust it worth a damn right now because it's just been so hit or miss. I mean, like I said, two goals, in my honest opinion, is plenty. I mean, that's that's enough goals. That should get you through. Yeesh. A little bit better, a little bit better control and turn on that. You'd have had a goal, my friend. A goal. 
But, you know, as I said before, it is what it is. There's not really much we can do about it right now. And I think I said, ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. I think I said it was Heitzenden that has a, um, or Reisenden, whose contract is up at the end of this, you know, in a few months. I think it's, uh, um, actually Reisenden. Or wait, no, fuck. I don't even know what I'm saying. I forget. I, no, 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 just ignore me. I mean, stupid. I get them fucking confused sometimes. Ooh, nice pass. Our wing play, honestly, I think our wing play has been pretty good. I, I, I honestly do. I think they're probably our better defenders. Being Gronholm and Stopsilla, even though Stopsilla is not, is not a natural defender, I think he's been a lot better than... Oh, oh wow, that counted. I thought he was off sides. But we'll take it. We'll take it, we'll take it, we'll take it. As always, like I said, I mean, this... You know, there's, there's a lot of good here in this formation. I mean, there's, you know... But once again, I mean, it all depends on having, you know, solid defense. I guess that's just kind of across the board. I mean, I, I you know... You know, what? if you were to ever play this game, I mean, one of, you know, what you've got to do to be successful is just defend. I mean, you know, if you can defend and keep other clubs off the board, you know, you get, that's a great place to start. You know, like I said, every team needs to defend, you know. I mean, there isn't, uh, you know, like I said, it, there isn't a team that, you know, can kind of bypass it and you don't really need it. I don't know what he has to say. How the hell is he on the sides there? But, uh, you know, like I said, I mean, it's, yeah, like I said, big, big example of that was Liverpool last year. If you're watching the English Premier League, they put up a shit ton of goals and were scoring all over the fucking place. But what doomed them in the end is their inability to defend. You know, Brendan Rodgers kind of, kind of just, uh, you know, turned a blind eye to it and hoped it would go away, and it never did, and it screwed us in the end. And, you know, like I said, and, and I and I hated, hated our poultry defending, quite honestly. That's something I, I kind of set out to, to make sure we do not do. So, in other words, I guess what I'm saying is, if you haven't noticed, this, the, this, this club, these defenders in particular, annoy the fucking shit out of me. I mean, it's just, like I said, that, they just, you know, like, it's not, a lot of times it's not necessarily great shots or great passages of play that open us up and score against us. It's just, lackluster defending or bad defending or not much defending in in any way shape or form honestly our best defense comes in midfield i mean that's something like that i think i've said this before i think our strength is oof, a really got all the way down there didn't he I, I, I think the strength of this club is in midfield i think that's where our best players are and i think that's where you know as much as i hate to say it we have to defend from but then again, like I said, that's why having three solid center backs back there, you know, really make this any formation, really. Not just this formation, but any formation really work well because then you can get kind of out of, you know, not really out of source, but kind of get out of position and, and really run people down in midfield and really go after and attack the game and try and take control of the game in midfield, knowing that you get through three guys in the back that are going to be there when you need them to be. And I think that's kind of the problem right now is we don't have those guys that when we expose ourselves just a little in midfield, I don't think we have good enough defenders to cover for that. So once again, that's priority number one come this off season. But like I said, I mean, in general, I think a wing play has been our best, our best defenders really. I mean, I think they've been, they've really got involved offensively. Oof, nice. It's probably been the most consistent players, in all honesty. That's something that, that I have kind of noticed. I'm like, you don't need to have great wing players with this formation to have them kind of stand out. You know, I, I noticed that with my Viking career as well. I mean, I had a couple. I have one, actually both of them. You know, both wingers that I have on there right now are nothing really that special. I mean, they're not really all that great. They're kind of average. Probably would fit in well with this club here that we have. You know, I mean, attribute-wise, they'd probably be about the same talent level. You know, so, um, so like I said, I mean, really, you know, you really don't need much to make that position work. Which, like I said, it's it's nice. That, that way, you know, you don't have to worry about, you know. Oh, nice. Very nice. I wish, it, I wish the game would do a little bit more of that in general. 
I like that shot when you kind of kick it back and you've got some space like there right in front of you. I don't think the game, or I haven't figured out at least, how to make them pull the trigger on that. Probably the long shots instruction would make them... Right? Is it long shots or fire on sight or shoot on sight, whatever it is, will make them, you know, shoot that more often. Because I kind of like that shot, but also I don't want to... I don't. I don't want to uh, want them to start shooting from outside the box because that's something I don't. I don't agree with. And you have to shoot from inside the box, in my opinion. However, when you kick it back out on those set pieces like that, I kind of I like that shot from there. I mean, I like trying your luck. I mean, nine times out of ten, it's going to get deflected. But you know, sometimes that deflection can be good one way or another. You know, get a shot ricocheting around in there. And whatnot. Oh my god. Here's a right to him, too. At least that had a little bit of height on it so it didn't get to him with too much, uh, too much pace on it. But anyway, you know, like I was saying, I kind of, I wish there were like situational instructions. That's something I think that would be in like a nice, a nice place to take this game, take the match engine, and take the tactics is, oh boy. Oof. That made me nervous. Whenever they, whenever goalkeepers do that, that makes me super fucking nervous. Especially that pass right there. Like that was that was a pass from Ills, which means the keeper can go ahead and pick that up. I'd rather than pick it up and hold play up, in my opinion. Look at Gronholm all the way up there, all by his lonesome. Can't finish with a damn, but Jesus, nice, nice to see. You know, once again, I mean, it, our wingers, our wingers, our wingers contribute a lot to this formation. I think I've said that before, how complete wingbacks or just wingers in general. I mean, whenever you have wingers in a formation, they're going to be pretty heavily involved because of what the nature of the position really entails. They got to be, you know, up and down the pitch constantly. Oh, boy, another nice pass. And terrible finish. Look at that. Go figure. Go figure. But like I said, I mean, I think... Because one thing I've noticed, like, this this game spawns a shit ton. And I mean, an absolute shit ton of attacking midfielders. So I think what I'm going to do, and I was kind of touching on this in the last episode, I think what I'm going to do is recruit attacking midfielders, retrain them to play in those wing positions, and see how that works. I've used it a little bit with Staffs a lot already. And I think I'm going to kind of, you know, fuck. Really? God damn it. Probably our best offensive player, too. Just decided to get fucking hurt. <sighs> well, Han, and guess what? You get to go out there. Although, I'm not sure that I want you in that position. Fuck it. We're going to undo that and put on all out there. Because I want to hold Han in for a midfield position if we get a chance or need to. Or fuck it, maybe Hinkle will get sent off and we'll just say fuck it anyway. Because he's, he's on a yell, as it is. Ain't like it fucking matters anyway, right? Hmm. Well, there it is, halftime. Alright, so we're up two goals. Alright, should we, should we do, should we do what we should do? Yep. I'm very pleased. I'm going to be nice. Because I do, I do, like I said, I, I do like the two goal lead, but we'll see, we'll see how we <laughs> defend it here. Actually, I, I had this conversation with the girlfriend earlier today, because uh, I was playing on my Galway United career, like I do every fucking day. And I was in the Champions League, and right up to the, was it like the semifinals or whatever, you know, to like the, yeah, the last round before the, before the championship of the, or the before the um, Champions League final, it was like whatever that last round was called, semifinals, whatever. I can never fucking remember. I don't know why. Just out of my fucking mind when it comes to shit like that. But anyhow, so I play United. I get Man United. I beat their ass four nothing at home. I go to Old Trafford. I am up four goals inside of forty minutes. I am leading eight nil on aggregate. Eight nil. I really wish I would have recorded it because this is fucking awesome. But here's a problem. One thing I don't like about this game is once you get to like that last half, or even honestly that second part of the tie, if you have any sort of lead whatsoever, this game really likes to fucking kick you in the balls with complacency. Like I said, when you're up 8-0 on aggregate, 
most teams that you're playing against know that and they are going to quit they're going to give up they're they're going to switch off and be like this is it. nice we're up three nil wonderful they're, they're you know i mean because it's just eight nil okay like if you're up two nil or whatever with 45 minutes in the whole tie to go i can see a team coming back and, and putting some pressure on you maybe even three nil but if you're up four nothing on aggregate even with 45 minutes to play most clubs are going to go out there but they don't just don't have the belief they just don't have the confidence they've been beat down for you know two hours of football with nothing to show for you know that's just the way football is you know but however like i said in this game and i've seen it like this many times i've seen clubs win three nothing four nothing in the first leg and lose the tie i don't know how like i said this this match engine just loves you know, the comeback it just fucking loves it so anyway after after the final 45 after 180 minutes of football i went on aggregate eight to three they scored three goals in that second half unbelievable you kind of actually saw that in this in this match this was a while ago i think we were up four nothing and we went and we surrendered three goals in the second half yeah it was like that i mean don't get me wrong okay yeah man united's good but like i said when you're up 8-0 on aggregate, the opposition is going to lose a little bit of hope. That's just the way it is. You know, should I even replace anyone? I'm kind of thinking of not doing that, actually. Yeah, yeah to hell with it. We'll just let them play it out. Yeah, I mean, that's just, that's just the way football is. I mean, this is the way any sport is. I mean, that's like being down eight touchdowns in football. I mean, American football, anyway. I mean, you're... you're <laughs> Hey, uh, at that point, you're just like, fuck it, let's just go home. I mean, that's just, that's just the way teams are. You know, I mean, it's just this is the nature of sports. You don't just sit, hey, man, we're down by eight touchdowns. Let's go out there and get seven of them right now. No, no. I mean, you look at the clock and like, can we go home now? I could use a chocolate sundae. Chocolate sundae? Hot fudge sundae. I don't know what I'm talking about. But anyhow, I mean, it's just, that's something that... Like, I, I, once again, I'm a perfectionist. And you know what? Like I said, we beat the hell out of Man United at home. For nothing. Completely dominated the match. And dominated the first 45 at Old Trafford. Hands down. And then, like I said, you know, it, it irritates me because I want that clean sheet. I want that 8 nothing on aggregate score. So it annoys the hell out of me. Yeah, I was happy that I won. But, you know, still. I, I just... It irritates the hell out of me. And like I said, you've seen a little bit of that already when we first made that switch to that uh, to the four one two three zero when when we <laughs> damn near gave up a four goal lead in the second half. But if if we get to that point where we're playing two legged ties and shit like that in this LP, you'll see you'll see some of that. And I'm sure at that time I will bitch about it too because like I said. I mean, that's, you know, like I said, if you're leading 3 nothing on aggregate even, like I said, you know, I can kind of understand. Teams will have a little bit of hope, but eight goals, eight goals with 45 minutes to go, you switch off. I mean, you know, as a fan, you, you're, your club's down that much. Hell, your club's down four goals going into the second half of that tie. You're probably not even turning on the telly. Just saying. I know I sure sure wouldn't. I mean, and, I, and I'm one of those people who holds hope above all hope, you know, holds out for a fucking miracle, but I'm still not going to have much. Jesus. It's a fucking laser. <sighs> Why can't we ever get shots like that? You know, I mean, maybe it's just the way I fucking play football and, you know, our offense is predicated on, you know, moving the ball around and good teamwork and creating easy opportunities and yet then they fucking shoot that little thing from 30 yards and score that's yeah, nah, nah, nah. now see actually come to think of it you saw that right there you're not going to see that very often i mean you've seen some really awesome shots that was a hell of a shot don't get me wrong and that was one of those things that you'd see once a season maybe if you're that lucky and that's the sort of shit that fm15 was pulling on you the whole damn time just just to give you a little bit of an idea I, I know i talked about that a few episodes ago now and that's you know old news and you probably didn't even watch that episode but 
Oh, Jesus. Wow. Wow. What was that? That was that was awkward. But anyhow, we're going to walk out of here with a 3-1 win, hopefully, if, if the result holds, which is good. Which means... We what? Do, do we... Uh... No, that means lead will be 9 momentarily until FC Hockey plays, because I don't think they're playing on, on this day. So, um, that's good. I'm okay with that. Hopefully they'll hopefully they'll lose and we'll get back to that eight ish point margin. You know, just to just to pad that lead a little bit, give us a little bit of a cushion. So that when we do shit like in the last episode and can't figure out how to win, you know, we we at least get some sort of leeway. But I'll tell you right now, I mean if if we surrender goals like we did there, or did there did in the last match, you know we're not gonna. Oh boy, we're not gonna have a very fun first season in the Irish Premier Division. Why didn't you, Irish? I keep calling it Irish Finnish Premier Division. Why didn't he pull the trigger there? That was that was just. I mean, at least hit the goalkeeper there. Jesus, make him work. Don't don't give him an easy out on that one. Once again, I wish there's a way to like to put together, uh, you know, instructions, team instructions for situationals like that, like you know, you know, a little more stuff, you know, something else, and like set pieces. That was, yeah, way off sides there, or in that situation when you're on the break or whatever, just shoot, you know, don't or dribble around the keeper, hold up, you know, shit like that. Because way too often they try to hold up. And personally, I want them, if you're in there like that, like I'll say was, just fire it. I don't care if you hit the keeper in the face and you miss it. That's fine. You know, a shot on goal is never a bad shot. You never know what's going to happen. I mean, yeah, five guys closing you down. Just pound it at the net. That's all you got to do. But anyhow, a wonderful 3-1 win. I'm, I am happy with that. Yeah, we have a nine-point lead at present. Hello, FC Haka and pretty much everyone else has a game in hand. So, hopefully we'll at least, well, I mean, we're obviously going to at least maintain the six-point lead, you know, after this round of games are done. But anyhow, uh, that does it for this episode. If you made it this far on YouTube, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment, all that good shit. And remember, the ghost key is the only place where pants are optional.